Hey everyone, it's Studio X News coming at ya. I just thought I would update you on what the U.S. and China is up to. Hmm, this might be something to look at too. Let's listen in. Stocks took a big hit Tuesday afternoon after the Trump administration announced that it will place visa restrictions on certain Chinese officials ahead of Thursday's scheduled trade talks. The U.S. Department issued the visa restrictions. Take China. China, which is using economic means to coerce countries into lopsided deals that benefit Beijing and leave its clients mired in debt. The U.S. response comes just hours after the Chinese Minister of Commerce issued a statement warning the U.S. to stay out of its domestic affairs while negotiating the trade deal. We strongly urge the U.S. to immediately stop making irresponsible remarks on the issue of Xinjiang, stop interfering with the wrong actions of China's internal affairs, and remove relevant Chinese entities from the list of entities as soon as possible, a spokesperson from the Ministry of Commerce said. The uptick in heated rhetoric does not bode well for the trade talks that are scheduled to begin October 10. About those numbers, the stock market is substantially up as it was yesterday. And our country does well. Europe is not doing well. Asia is doing poorly, to put it mildly. And we continue to do very well with the miracle. But the unemployment numbers just came out, 3.5 percent unemployment. And that is a tremendous number, the lowest in over 50 years. So very happy. And I think really very important, again, I'll say, wages are up. When I was running, wages were nowhere. They were going down. And people were having two and three jobs, and they were making less money than they made 20 years before. Now wages are up, so we're very happy about that. The planned new round of China-U.S. high-level economic and trade consultations is expected to cover a wide range of topics, with business and trade experts hoping the two sides will reach a speedy resolution amid weak global market sentiment. At the U.S. side's invitation, Vice Premier Liu He will lead a delegation to Washington for the next round of talks on Thursday and Friday, said the Ministry of Commerce. Liu will meet United States Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, the ministry said in a statement on Tuesday. According to the statement, the Chinese delegation will include officials from the ministries of Commerce, Finance, Industry and Information Technology, and Agriculture and Rural Affairs, as well as the Central Bank and the National Development and Reform Commission. I don't see a recession. I mean, the world is in a recession right now. And uh, although that's too big a, a statement, but if you look at China, China's doing very, very poorly. They've had, I just saw a report, they've had the worst year they've had in 27 years because of what I've done. And they want to come to the negotiating table. You know, they're having companies lose, I mean, they're leaving. The companies are leaving and they're laying off millions of people because they don't want to pay 25%. And that's why they want to come to the table. I don't think there's another reason other than President Xi, I'm sure, likes me very much. But they're losing millions and millions of jobs in China, and we're not paying for the tariffs. China is paying for the tariffs for the 100th time. And I understand tariffs very well. Other countries, it may be that if I do things with other countries, but in the case of China, China is eating the tariffs, at least so far. All right, hold on here while I have momentary pause of internet. <clears throat> you know, well, Yong Wai Yong, an economics professor at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing, said the Chinese delegates' expertise will reflect to some extent the agenda to be discussed in the consultations. Topics of discussions may cover trade, financial market opening up, intellectual property rights, and All right, the internet is truly going crazy here today. I wonder, while they're shutting down California's power, 
You know, my phone's been acting funny. My internet been acting funny. Young said, No matter how many obstacles that may stand in the way, I hope the two sides will seize the opportunity this time and create a win-win outcome, Young said. Both negotiating teams need to be flexible during the talks. Like I said, internet's acting funny. Has this happened to any of you out there? I'm just curious. In order to work out a relatively comprehensive agreement. Secretary Esper, Secretary Pompeo, and the President have all spoken about the impact Chinese intellectual property theft is having on our national security, American commerce, and the defense industry. Again, we need to go on the offense to protect our technology versus merely acting defensively. Bulgarian economist Georgieva, 64 years old, was giving her first major speech as head of the IMF. She is the second woman to lead the IMF and the first managing director from an emerging market nation in the 75-year history of the fund. So why the slowdown in 2019? There are a range of issues and one common theme across these issues, fractures, she told reporters, political leaders and diplomats gathered at the fund headquarters. I will start with trade. We have spoken in the past about the dangers of trade disputes. Now, we see that they are... And it's pausing again. Well, that's okay. Because... We'll get through this. Still, is any, are you actually ready? taking a toll? Global trade growth has come to almost a standstill. Two years ago, the global economy was in synchronized upswing, measured by GDP, nearly 75% of the world was accelerating. Today, even more of the world economy is moving in sync. But, unfortunately, this time growth is decelerating. To be precise, in 2019, we expect slower growth in nearly 90% of the world. In other words, the world economy is now in synchronized slowdown. And this wi widespread deceleration means that growth this year will fall to its lowest rate since the beginning of the decade. Georgieva announced, the IMF has forecast that measures already announced may cut as much as 0.8% off the global economy in 2020 alone. In part because of the trade tensions, worldwide manufacturing activity and investment. Uh, do you think Trump's tariffs have anything to do with this? Uh, he's crashing the world economy. This is crazy. We were fueling have weakened before. substantially. There is a serious risk that services and consumption could also soon be affected, she added. She takes the reins at an un... ...certain time for the global economy with a landscape of slowing growth and rising trade tensions. Even if growth picks up in 2020, the current rifts could lead to changes that last a generation, broken supply chains, siloed trade sectors, a digital Berlin Wall that forces countries to choose between technology systems, said the former CEO of the World Bank. Our goal should be to fix these fractures. Our world is intertwined. So our responses must be coordinated. The IMF is expected to unveil its forecast for global growth when it publishes the World Economic Outlook October 15th at the beginning of the annual meetings. So why the slowdown in 2019? There is a range of issues and one common theme across these issues. Fractures. I will start with trade. We have spoken in the past about the dangers of trade disputes. Now we see that they are actually 
taking a toll. Global trade growth has come to almost standstill, in part because of trade tensions, worldwide manufacturing activity and investment have weakened substantially. There is a serious risk that services and consumption could also soon be affected. And even if growth picks up in 2020, the current rifts could lead to changes that last for a generation. Broken supply chains, siloed trade sectors, a digital Berlin Wall that forces countries to choose between technological systems. <clears throat> and our goal has to be to fix these fractures. Our work. Okay, she's getting into repeating a lot of the same stuff, but it was kind of good that she did because do you see how this now is going to be the answer to fix these fractures, this failing world economy? All of this stuff, plus the peace deals going on in the Middle East right now. The answer, they're going to tell us here shortly, is to accept coming together as one world system. I mean, blow, right in our faces, right? Anyways. I thought this was interesting. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It's getting hot out there, folks. I think uh, we're in a lot more deeper than a lot of us want to see. Some people don't. Some people want to keep going. or They're waiting for it to be so blatant right in their face that I don't know if slapping them will make it work. I don't know. But anyways... Did you listen to the Kings of the East again? That's the sixth Trump. That's when all that action happens. What are your thoughts? All right. This is Studio X News. And for the moment, I'm out.